This video is sponsored by Brilliant. Hey, hey, Marcus House with you here, and what an amazing 12 month ride it has been so far, watching the SpaceX Starlink satellite constellation continue to increase in numbers. This colossal network is now well on the way past 700 satellites and growing fast, with regular launches now seemingly just routine. With the private beta well underway and public beta coming up in the near future, the test results known so far are super impressive. Time now to take a look back at the Starlink journey. For those of you who are not very familiar with what Starlink is, you are in for a real treat here. For those who follow developments regularly, it can be easy to forget some events over time. It would be first helpful to look back at when Starlink was announced before progressing to how the launches have been going over the past 12 months, as well as taking a look at some statistics on the real world private beta testing currently underway. Now in mid-January in 2015, at the official opening of SpaceX in Seattle, Elon Musk announced that the engineering campus would now be the hub for Starlink development. This immense undertaking was described by Elon himself as an ambitious effort that over time will effectively rebuild the internet in space, while jokingly saying not to create Skynet in the process. Now, Not only will Starlink service Earth, but it's envisaged to also service Mars in the future. After all, it too will need global communication coverage. It will be interesting to see what other technological developments come from this program. So here we are though in late 2020 with SpaceX producing approximately 120 Starlink satellites per month with a desired launch frequency of 2 per month. This should mean that they are close to the required minimum number of satellites needed to service the global community. But no, they're not quite there at this stage. Unfortunately, due to external influences or technical issues, this launch frequency slipped at times during this year, 2020. Saying that, SpaceX now has well over half the number of satellites in orbit now that are needed for full operation and private beta testing is already underway. The initial test results there we will cover after this Starlink launch summary. Now, the first batch of 60 operational satellites known as version 1 were launched on November 11, 2019. Now, this was actually launched too, as the first launch was an initial set of more beta versions of satellites. Now, these high speed, low latency broadband internet satellites have a mass of around 260 kilograms each, and they eventually raise their orbits to around 550 kilometers in altitude. Now, you just need to check out this Constellation Tracker content here by Elias, which we will be referring to throughout the Starlink Roundup. This launch from Cape Canaveral Air Force Station Launch Complex 40, or Slick 40, went as planned with the booster returning for a safe landing on the drone ship, of course, I still love you. The payload of 60 Starlink satellites deployed successfully, and there we have the Constellation underway. We were also treated to a sneak view of liquid oxygen sloshing around in the tank here, wishing that we could see that more often. The new year arrived, and on January 6th, 2020, Launch 3 lifted off from Slick 40 with another batch of 60 satellites. One was known as DarkSat, having a special coating on it to help reduce reflectivity, which is most notable between deployment altitudes and before they reach their operational altitude. This reflectivity was raised as a concern by astronomical societies and other Earth-based observatories, and SpaceX were quickly onto finding a solution to this. The launch went well, and another safe booster recovery on Of Course I Still Love You. The deployment went without a hitch, bringing the total to around 180 satellites if you also include the May 2019 batch or the version 0.9s. The next launch for January on the 29th from Slick 40 was uneventful with more satellites added to the constellation and safe recovery of the booster that notably launched Demo 1 previously. A fairing half was also caught there by Miss Tree. February 17 and time for another launch from Slick 40 and this was the quickest booster turnaround to date. This mission was shorter in duration due to the elliptical orbit chosen as opposed to the circular two burn orbits of the past launches. Now everything went well with ascent and deployment but when it came to the attempt for the 50th successful landing of a Falcon booster it failed on final approach making a soft touchdown in the ocean a short distance from the drone ship. Of course I still love you. Now later the cause was determined as winds being 
trending higher than predicted. On March 18th, the first launch from Pad 39A at Kennedy Space Center took place, and this one wasn't without a hiccup either, as three days prior, the booster experienced an out-of-family error, which was an anomaly triggering an auto-abort. Now, the sixth mission for 2020 was the first time for a fifth flight of the same Falcon 9 booster which flew in November the previous year. The launch seemed to go to plan, but then suddenly a very quick flash was seen from an engine. It was later advised that one engine had gone into shutdown due to a quantity of cleaning fluid being caught in a sensor dead leg where it could not flow through and then it just ignited. Now, the booster was able to complete the mission, but ultimately it failed to be recovered. And this was most likely due to the engine that shut down being needed for the entry and the landing burn. Needless to say, this cleaning process was immediately reviewed and processes changed. Now, those few boosters were not the typical result, and it seemed quite unusual at the time to lose both of them. There have been many more return to port, as beautifully captured here repeatedly by Greg Scott. Absolutely love this work, by the way. If you're not following Greg Scott on Twitter, you are totally missing out. There are constantly new launch and booster return photos dropping here, so check that out. Huge thank you as well to Eric for working with us here and allowing us to share his beautiful 3D work scattered through videos over the last few months. Amazing work there and of course links to both of those are in the description. And while I'm at it I guess a big thank you to all of you as well for watching here. Liking, subscribing, sharing and commenting on these videos is most awesome of you and having you join me here every week is such a privilege. Thank you so much for your continued amazing support. So yes, next up from Pad 39A, we have yet another launch on April 22nd. This was the seventh Starlink and also the seventh mission for 2020. And the flight went routinely and saw the constellation size now exceed 400 satellites. Back to Slick 40 and the 8th Starlink mission and the 9th mission overall for the year on June 3rd. Now the launch went as planned and we were also treated to some nice fairing separation views here. Just amazing to see. One of the satellites in this batch also had a special modification called a visor, becoming known as Visasat, which would aim to better reduce reflectivity for Earth-based observers. All went well with recovery on the drone ship, of course I still love you. This recovery attempt here would signify the first time that a Falcon 9 booster landed for the fifth time. And it's also worth noting, I think, that the following day, June 4th, marked the 10th anniversary of the very first Falcon flight, which I just think is a cool thing to remember. Now, in a first for SpaceX, the Starlink launch for June 13th at Slick 40 had some nice achievements. Not only was this the first rideshare for a commercial client named Planet with three small satellites, but this was also the fastest reuse of the same pad at a stunning 9 days, 7 hours and 56 minutes if timed from launch to launch. This Starlink mission launched only 58 Starlink satellites which were deployed this time along with the rideshare payloads. The separation sequence had some stunning visuals as well with a booster and grid fins illuminated here by the rising sun. There were also some other notable visuals here with the fairing recovery vessels Miss Tree and Miss Chief spread so far apart that one was still in darkness. We also saw a very nice landing on the drone ship with no loss of signal at all this time. Payload deployments were successful as we can see here, but unfortunately there was no vision of Starlink due to lack of ground station coverage. Now since we never got to see that deployment footage, let's just take a look at Adam's Starlink deployment that he created in Kerbal Space Program. Yes, here we see 60 stock Starlink satellites there. I do feel sorry for his computer's CPU. That's just crazy. Now, it's interesting to look back here at the confidence of SpaceX in the visor design for their satellites to reduce that reflectivity. Despite not having performance feedback yet on the single visor sat deployed on June 3rd, SpaceX announced that all future Starlink satellites will be fitted with these visors. A second rideshare mission followed on August 7th at Pad 39A after two failed launch attempts on the 26th of June and the 8th of July. A good example of that launch frequency slippage here combined with the lack of pad availability. As an example of that, just four days prior, Crew Dragon's Demo 2 mission with Doug and Bob returned to Earth, and the following day, the Starship prototype had its first test flight to 150 meters. What an amazing week that was. So yes, with 57 Starlink visor satellites and two Black Sky rideshare satellites known as Global 7 and Global Eight, this mission went as intended. At the request of the client, this orbit was to be a circular insertion, so the mission to Starlink deployment was just over 90 minutes into the mission. 
11 days later, on the 18th of August, Slick 40 would host the 11th Starlink launch with 58 Starlink satellites. This again was a rideshare mission with three small satellites for Planet, Skysat 19, 20 and 21. All went as expected with a nice ascent to orbit and I must say this launch also seemed to have the best engine audio that I have ever heard to date. Just listen to the raw power here. Recovery of that booster here was another first being the sixth reuse and recovery of this particular vehicle. Deployment was successful with nice views of the visors being deployed followed by the train of satellites. And what a way to finish this mission than with some stunning drone footage of the fairing halves being caught by Ms. Tree. Let's take a moment to slow down the pace here and soak up a little of this relaxing elevator music. The historic pad at 39A facilitated the September 3rd launch. That was the 12th Starlink mission and the 16th mission overall for 2020. With roughly 650 Starlink satellites now in orbit, here comes another 60. Liftoff was flawless and some very nice ascent visions here. Recovery of the booster was again a success as was the deployment of the payload occurring some 15 minutes after liftoff and probably some of the best deployment visions we've seen to date. It was later announced that two satellites conducted a test of their inter-satellite links. These are also known as space lasers. Hundreds of gigabytes of data were transferred via the links, and once this is fully operational, this constellation will service countries' data transfer needs on a scale never seen before. This is how you revolutionize satellites and internet connectivity. As Elon announced in 2015 at the official opening of SpaceX Seattle, we briefly saw at the start of this segment. Most recently, we saw the 13th launch and the 17th mission of the year on October 6th, lifting off from Pad 39A at Kennedy Space Center in Florida. Carrying another 60 Starlink satellites into orbit, the first stage had previously flown most notably on Crew Dragon's Demo 2 with Bob and Doug. This Starlink launch though had several delays due to weather conditions and also a ground sensor out of family anomaly which was then resolved a little time later. It was great to see a successful liftoff for that mission going perfectly, setting the stage for another successful flight. Short Shortly after the main engine cutoff, the fairing separated and they began their homeward journey. As the second stage continued on, the first stage made another pinpoint landing, this time on the drone ship Of Course I Still Love You, marking the 61st successful recovery of a booster. The fairing catch attempt saw some success as well, with one half being caught by Miss Tree and the other half being scooped out of the ocean. There was a bit of a wait for payload deployment with separation of the tension rods quickly followed by the release of the next batch of satellites to complement the growing constellation. Topping all that off, we only just started the week with yet another Starlink mission, the 18th mission for 2020, and just check out the glorious weather there setting the scene with Falcon 9. Another textbook drone ship landing, and there you have it, Booster 1051 landing for the sixth time. Only one other booster has had six landings under its belt, so equal first there. Just can't wait for the record-breaking seventh landing from one of those. Fairing deploy there, and the typical payload of six 60 more Starlink satellites to add to the collection. Just beautiful every time. Keep in mind as well we have another Starlink mission coming very shortly too, hopefully within the next day or two. So yes, that pretty much brings us up to date for all the launches from the last 12 months. And like all things SpaceX, there is always so much to cover and keep up to speed with. Just remember as well that the Starlink satellite constellation is only really just over halfway complete for the minimum desirable global coverage. And eventually there are going to be thousands of these Starlink satellites in a mega constellation. The more interesting question is what the real world experience is like for potential customers at this early stage. Let's just take a look at the private beta test currently underway and the initial feedback of those experiences. In June of 2020, SpaceX updated its Starlink website, allowing interested potential customers to sign up to receive updates about the program and learn about the availability in their area. When people provided their zip code and contact information, they received an email from SpaceX saying that the private beta testing is expected to begin later this summer, followed by public beta testing. Then in July of 2020, SpaceX opened the private beta to SpaceX employees and their families. The beta testers were provided with a 
Starlink kit, which consisted of a Starlink dish terminal, a Wi-Fi router, a power supply, and mounts for the system. Users had to then install the terminal themselves and then put it somewhere with a clear view of the northern sky. By accepting this kit, users had to agree to test the Starlink system for 30 to 60 minutes each day and provide feedback to SpaceX about their experiences. As disclosed so far, some beta tests have resulted in download speeds of over 100 megabits per second, upload speeds of about 40 megabits per second, and a one-way latency time of under 20 milliseconds. Now, SpaceX's long-term goal is to reach 8 milliseconds in latency and up to 1 gigabits per second for downloads. However, these preliminary tests are already in line with video game-worthy broadband latency and download speeds offered by many broadband companies in the United States on average. So yes, the evolution of the Starlink project over the last year really has been astounding, and if it all works as planned, this really is going to change the world. Now, I'd like to know what you think though, as this particular project has had those pros and cons quite thoroughly debated ever since the very first launch. Let me know what you think about the Starlink project in the comments below. A huge thank you to our sponsor Brilliant for supporting this video. There is just so much to learn out there, especially if you're interested in topics like we talk about here so often. In this current age of amazing online content, it is no surprise that people are taking control of their own learning. Now, if you're searching for great online math and science resources, you really can't go past the offering here with Brilliant. If you are a professional that wants to catch up on the latest topics, a student looking to push ahead, or someone who just wants to learn how the universe ticks, you should check it out. Every time I revisit the courses here, I find some amazing topics I didn't even know that I wanted to know more about. Take this course here that aims to expand your mind with the paradoxes and beauties of infinity. Here you'll learn exactly what infinity is and how it is used in mathematics. Yet another engaging topic that puzzles you, surprises you, and expands your understanding of the universe. There is a load of content here, over 60 interactive courses in math, science, and computer science to check out with brilliant premium. It is all laid out like a story and broken down into pieces so that you can tackle them a little bit at a time. Thank you very much to Brilliant for their support of my channel here. And if you would like to help support me and would like to give it a try, head to brilliant.org slash Marcus House. The first 200 people will get 20% off the first year of Brilliant Premium. You can head there from the link in the description below. Huge thank you to my amazing patrons here as well. There is no way that we can continue creating content at this frequency and length without you. The support that you all provide here allows us to increase the time that we can spend, and that is all thanks to the growing list of names we can see right there. Thank you, each and every one of you. As that list continues to grow, we can do even more. This includes, of course, the work done by the production team helping me out as well. As support increases, that helps the entire team. So if you like what we're doing here and you'd like to join our awesome patrons, head to patreon.com slash Marcus House. That gives you access to interact with me more directly via the linked roles on our Discord server. You can have earlier access to the videos to watch before anyone else. You can also have your name listed right here like all of these other incredible people. For those that can't help in that way and would like to simply help in some other way, simply interacting with these videos as much as you can helps a huge amount. Just liking, subscribing, commenting and sharing, that is all most awesome of you. Just as importantly though, it is you that loves these topics and shares these discussions with all of your friends and family. And all that helps to drive this increasing love of space innovation that we are seeing globally. Keep spreading the word because it all makes a difference. A massive thank you as well to the Quality Control Squad here helping me research and proof the material for these videos. If you're interested in these topics and would like to be a part of it, follow me on Twitter and do get in touch. In the tile in the bottom left today, we have my video last week. You can check that out right there. In the top right is my latest video. And in the bottom right, content that YouTube has selected from my channel just for you. Thank you everyone as always for watching and we'll see you all in the next video.